And uh, in their presentation titled Growing Direct to Customers International E-Commerce and Expanding into New Markets, the successful expansion of Hugo Boss, we will hear insights about uh, how Hugo Boss, the renowned upper premium fashion company, has successfully expanded its online stores and has grown like in, in dozens of new markets around the globe with a seamlessly localized experience. We wish you wonderful insights with this presentation. Hi, I'm Mark Betty. I'm VP of Business Development at Global E, and I'm delighted to have with me today Aisha from Hugo Boss, who's going to talk about their experience of working with Global E. So today, I'm going to introduce some details around cross-border e-commerce and give you some background to that before I hand over to more details of Aisha. Okay, so who are Global E? We are an end-to-end -end cross border e-commerce company, uh, working with over 440 brands. Um, we're the chosen partner of some of the world's most iconic brands. Uh, you can see some of the names down there. Uh, and those brands have one thing in common, which is that they all see a really positive uplift when they work with Globally, an average of 60% increase in their conversion rate. Okay, the cross-border e-commerce market. Now, 2020 was obviously an incredible year, um, and it, even more incredible is that the cross-border market continues to grow at double the rate of the domestic market, a huge $736 billion uh, estimated within the next couple of years. Um, so, as we know, 2020 was huge, um, and then 170 million more shoppers came online in 2020, uh, taking it to a total of 2.3 billion. And it's really interesting to see, although the growth was big in some of the markets like Latin America, there was also huge growth in North America and Europe, so huge potential across the world. Uh, and the thing that we know from, from doing this for many, many years is that one size does not fit all. Um, customers are becoming increasingly uh, high in their expectations around language, around currency, payments, uh, shipping, tax and duties, uh, and tailoring your proposition uh, and your messaging across those markets is super, super important and, and more important now than it ever has been before. So looking at the five main barriers that customers tell us and, and, and have told people before that um, stop them shopping cross-border, uh, number one is delivery shipping costs. No one likes to pay high delivery when shipping internationally. Uh, shipping's not fast enough, it's the second one. Uh, and the third one being that they're not going to receive those goods. So they want to know the goods are coming, they want to know it's fast and they want to know it's tracked. Uh, the fourth one is um, having to pay customs duties when the parcel arrives. Again, one of the most annoying things about a cross-border transaction is getting hit with an extra charge. We didn't even realize it. Uh, and finally, returns, especially if you're in the apparel uh, and lifestyle sector like we are. Um, you know, lots of customers will feel it doesn't fit and they want to return it. If they do want to return it, they want to make sure it's seamless and as easy as possible. Um, and there's lots and lots of things in terms of cross-border commerce and trading that, that affect customers and you know, are changing all the time. How do you possibly keep on top of those things? How do you possibly keep on top of things like Brexit? How do you manage that on your own you know, understand and, and work your way through it? And that's really what Globally is here to do, is to help you through all of those things. So you know, how do you sell to the UK post-Brexit? How do you handle VAT, duties, customs clearance? You know, we're set up to help you get through all of those things. And you know, we work very successfully with our merchants to, to make the experience as seamless as it possibly could be, despite the obvious Brexit challenges. Um, and you know, we, what we say is, is that deep localization is, is absolutely key to growing your e-commerce business internationally and tailoring the proposition to each of those individual markets. Um, and really, you know, truly end-to-end -end localized experience, that is what we do. That's what we do for our, our partners and we're super proud to do. You know? So it's, it's, a, it's a message when you land on the site saying, hey, we ship to your country. It's now quicker and easier than ever before. It's local pricing that you expect. You know, you know what you're going to be paying when it arrives. Um, it's a localized language checkout. So, you know, again, smoothing the customer journey and giving you confidence throughout. Um, it's giving that guaranteed landing cost. You know, I know exactly what I'm going to pay when it arrives um, rather than just guessing when it, you know, when it arrives. Um, it's alternative payment options, you know, they, they vary around the world and if you can pay in your preferred payment option with, you know, whatever that is around the world, whether Alipay in China or cash on delivery in the Middle East, um, you know, we offer those services to again smooth the transition as easy as possible. Um, and we offer multiple um, shipping options, um, you know, which particularly in times of Brexit and, and pandemics, uh, having multiple shipping options is super, super important, as is making the returns process as seamless and easy as it possibly can be. So that's it from me. I'm going to hand you over to Aisha from Hugo Boss, who's going to tell you about the positive experience of working with Globally. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Aisha Khalid. I am the head of global e-commerce operations at Hugo Boss. For those who don't know Hugo Boss, um, it is one of the leading global companies in the premium apparel market. We are known for our two core brands, Boss and Hugo. We sell business wear, casual outfits, and athleisure styles, but are also known for selling shoes, accessories, fragrances, eyewear, kids wear, watches, you name it, we have it. In the fiscal year 2020, Hugo Boss generated about 1.9 billion in global sales. Um, in terms of what is really our DNA when it comes to fashion and style, our DNA is about being dressed with confidence. And as a customer, you should feel your best and authentic. Moving on to business, our vision for e-commerce or online sales is to provide the best in class online experience to our customers whenever and wherever. And with that started brewing the idea of our growth strategy, naturally turning into, should we be present everywhere, wherever our customers search for us? And with that also came the realization of, if we wanna do this, we need to do it really fast. So speed to market was a key component that we kept in mind when we, tried, when we composed our digital strategy. So what was our story before meeting Global E? Um, we are very well known globally with brick and mortar presence all over the world, selling our products in standalone stores and also department stores. But with that, we had limited reach. Um, and we also wanted to have a very strong digital footprint. Um, in terms of online stores, we started off slowly rolling out one by one until we reached a point of having about 15 online stores and that catered to, um, had a unique product offering for our customers. And while doing so, we were looking for a cost effective, simple yet flexible way to manage a solution that would help us expand online into new markets and grow our e-commerce profitability by turning our websites into stores to transact with more customers across the world. We were looking for a proven cross-border e-commerce solution with vast experience in supporting like-minded like fashion and luxury brands like Marc Jacobs, Michael Kors, Marc Spencer, but in general, we wanted to, a, a partner that would enable us to provide um, our customers with an optimal shopping experience. And this is where we really clicked with Global E. Um, they had the same vision um, and sort of a roadmap outlined that really connected with us. We, would all, we were also looking for a partner that would enable us to have full control of our offering per market and the flexibility to easily adjust and update it in response to customer demands, market changes, and business needs. Consequently, we were also looking for a partner that would provide us with the best practice recommendations and analysis and enable us to constantly optimize our e-commerce platform. The best, one of our best, best experiences of Global E is that we are able to bounce off our ideas with an account manager that's dedicated to us. When we see something new or we wish for something, we send in our wish list, it's reviewed, and we get a roadmap or at least an estimated time frame on, on when we can make it happen. Um, this person also shares with us best marketing or just general uh, business practices um, based on the data layer that they have and also sharing successes of their existing partners. We get on a weekly or a monthly, based on what you want, a detailed performance analysis. It gives us the ability to test new offers, promotions, and enhance our e-commerce return on investment. Lastly, we also are able to constantly optimize our e-commerce performance, adjusting our offering per market in order to maintain a best-in-class shopping experience. So in general, to summarize, the account manager helps us maintain what's happening in key markets, give us progression report, success of what our propositions are, where we should invest, what should be our priorities, and also doing a comparative analysis. Finally, we were looking for a solution that would integrate with the company's multiple existing front and back end systems, minimizing the administration and risk that comes with selling internationally. Then we met Global E. Um, with them, we found the answer to our questions, a partner that we could really um, 
have the same journey with and offer advanced localization features. So we started our journey with them last year. We launched localized websites in 30 new markets where previously we did not have a footprint. Um, and offering our customers an optimal shopping experience that's tailored specifically to their needs. We were able to set up customizable marketing banners, presenting the key market messages such as free shipping, above a certain threshold, easy returns, guarantee of no extra fees upon delivery. Here you see an example from Russia where we offer a shipping threshold and if you, um, which we can easily actually set up in the global e-portal managed by our own teams. So it gives us the flexibility of whenever, however we wanna do things, we can do it at the spur of the moment. A very simple example of it would be that we want to offer free shipping for Father's Day for orders over X euros. Um, this is a communication banner that can be listed on your homepage or wherever, wherever you feel it's appropriate for your brand. Um, we also offer prices in local currencies. I think this is a really, really big one. For us, um, Global E offers about current over 100 currencies and prices are set based on the local market and local company business strategy. 100% of our online customers in Australia and Singapore, for example, 99%, almost everybody in Poland and Norway, choose to pay in their local currency. Therefore, it's very important to offer a localized experience to improve that conversion rate. With Global E, we are also able to offer localized checkout options in 26 different languages. It enables the customers to feel um, more acquainted to shop in their native language. It is a seamless one-page checkout experience that's fast and convenient. Moreover, there are also options of presenting customers with prices that include all taxes and duties, informing them that there's no additional cost when something is delivered to them, when they make a purchase or when they receive their order number. It provides, provides a full whole number and it gives customers a certainty that there's nothing that will be expected of them at the time of delivery. For example, in Japan, where the thresholds for import duties and taxes are relatively low, product pricing is fully inclusive of taxes and duties. So sh shoppers can browse and shop with knowledge that no additional fees will be incurred upon delivery. Um, with Global E, we are also able to offer a wide variety of local payment options. This is a, also a really important factor because for certain markets, um, the customer is used to seeing a certain form of payment method. For example, for Middle East, cash on delivery is extremely common. Um, whereas there are some markets that are getting used to the idea of trying new payment methods, for example, Klarna. So what, what the great thing about Global E is that they are the ones who inform us of the new things that are happening in the market and they adjust our portfolio um, with one simple email, a little approval here and there, and you're all set to go. Many customers are more comfortable shopping in payment methods or currencies that they are most acquainted with. For example, in Poland, Norway, Portugal, respectively, 58, 34, 53% of the customers prefer local and alternative local payment methods versus half of them prefer preferring credit cards. Um, lastly, we also offer competitive shipping offerings. So there are different shipping options available depending per market, and you can set it up based on your needs. You can offer free or standard express shipping, whichever uh, portfolio works for your customer. And the pricing about these shipping and return options is extremely transparent and easy to follow in the FAQs. Um, to sum it up, we have noticed an impressive online growth for the markets that we have partnered on with Global E. Within the last five months of launching e-commerce, Australia and Poland almost doubled their conversion. And in Norway, our conversion rate is just as strong as our really stable existing European markets. And following these markets, we are looking to do our phase three of launch of more countries, hoping um, that we can do this this year has been, it's, it's been an extreme challenge and we look forward to working with them more. Thank you.
thank you very much, Mark and uh, Isha, like uh, for this uh, for sharing your knowledge. And uh, so we have a couple of questions now. Like, uh, so first of all, uh, we have seen that the pandemics uh, really accelerated the growth of e-commerce. However, on the on, on the flip side, um, like uh, it also caused difficulties in transportation of both goods and people. So, like um, from your experience, how did it affect cross-border trade? Well, yeah, of course, you know, at first there were some challenges, um, you know, across the board. I think one of the good things was that we were able to mitigate a lot of that disruption for the retailers that we work with by having a multi-carrier strategy. So if you're just using one carrier to ship around the world uh, and that carrier decides to stop operating or they can't fly, that's a problem, you know, by being able to route uh, the parcels through different carriers and different options and different markets through our multi-carriers, um, we were able to really mitigate a lot of that disruption. So, you yeah, know, that was, a, that was a, a big plus. Thanks a lot. Um, the world is becoming a global village. Yeah, we've always uh, heard that, uh, but it's becoming aware that this is like increasing and increasing. So is it, is it increasingly easy also to attract other countries with your offer? And uh, where are we in the process of a market saturation? What do you think? Is the large scale global commerce just beginning or are we going to see a slowdown? What's your opinion on that? Well, you could see from the slide I presented earlier that cross-border e-commerce is growing at double the rate of domestic. So the appetite is clearly there from, from international customers to shop cross-border. And what we're increasingly seeing is if you give them a, you know, they shop for the first time cross-border during the pandemic, if you give them a good experience, if you join up all of the seamless end-to-end, -end, um, then they'll shop again. And that's increasingly what we're seeing. So, you know, it's given us an opportunity to, to, um, to work with those customers for the first time and they, and they keep coming back. So, you know, we're super excited and positive about that. So, positive news, still growing. Positive news. Yeah. We hear from your accent, it's obvious. I'm sorry, we can't spare <laughs> out this question. Hashtag Brexit. Will Brexit in its current form have an impact on European trade that is beyond minor inconveniences? Or like, what's your stand on that? Uh, I, th I think so. I mean, it, it, clearly it can potentially hear a lot of news in the media of people who are not happy that they've been hit with extra charges and it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a hassle, it's an inconvenience. But again, you know, we've been able to mitigate a lot of that risk um, for the retailers that we work with. You know, we spent a lot of time preparing for Brexit uh, and helping them through it. You know, again, when certain you know, carriers decided to stop shipping because of Brexit, we switched to other carriers, you know, understanding how you prepare for you know, customs declaration and, and duties and VAT uh, across the different markets and how that varies you know it's super super complex you, you don't want to be dealing with that as a, as a brand you want to be focusing on growing your brand and not worrying about all of that stuff so you know that's what we're here for is to try and help you through it and, and mitigate those risks you know we, can, we can't change brexit unfortunately but we can we can help make it easier we can't change the situation we but fortunately we can find strong partners who have to deal with all the yeah. i don't i don't want to say the word thanks a lot mark thank thanks you. a lot aisha and uh, uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and uh, let's See you with the next talk then. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you.